Aûzu billâhi mineşşeytanirracîm. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ve salatu ve selamu ala seyyidina Muhammed eşrefil mursalîn ve ala sahbihi ecmaîn ve men tabi'a li sünnetihi ila yevmiddîn. Amma ba'd. Esselamu aleyküm ve rahmetullâhi ve berekâtuhu ya eyyuhal ikhvat ve l'khavat. Esselamu aleyküm brothers and sisters. I hope you're in a good state. Elhamdülillah. I greet you with the greeting of Islam, which is to say, may the peace and blessings of Allah Almighty be upon you. After that, we evoke the peace and blessings of Allah upon His Messenger, upon the companions of the Messenger, upon the family of the Messenger Muhammad, and upon all those who follow them in guidance until the Day of Judgment. Now, as to what follows, inshallah, we continue with our lessons of Muhtasar al akhdari which is the abridgment of Imam al akhdari in morals, purification, and prayer. Right now, we are still in the section on morals where Imam al akhdari he is informing the Muslim, the mukallaf, the legally responsible person, as to what is forbidden, what is forbidden upon him in terms of behaviors and moral actions. In the last section, he had effectively told us that it's haram, it's forbidden to ridicule a Muslim. He had told us that it's forbidden to uh, to mock a Muslim. He had told us that it's forbidden to insult a Muslim. He had told us that it's forbidden to swear by divorce. And he had told us that it's forbidden to scare a Muslim with anything that doesn't have to do with the Sharia. And he had also told us that it's 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 haram to 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 engage in in foul speech. You understand to engage in foul speech and ugly speech, to talk about immoralities and to talk about things that are undignified. So that was in the last section. So all that was to indicate that the Muslim has a big responsibility when it comes to his tongue. One of the companions of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He held, he, he uh, named Mu'adh ibn, uh, Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Uh, the Messenger وسلم, informed him, he told him to take a hold of his tongue and control it. And Mu'adh said, Ya Rasulullah, our people, our people, will we be taken into account for what we say with our tongues? Meaning, is Allah going to hold us to account and judge us for what we say? The Messenger وسلم, he said, Are people thrown in the hellfire for anything more frequently? or more common than what is between their jawbones, meaning their tongue. Meaning that the actions of the tongue, the statements of the tongue, when they're evil, not only do they cause harm to people's reputation, to people's honor, to people's feelings, but they also result in a person being held responsible for it by Allah in the next life. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't forgive that person for those sins, then that sin will be accounted and punished for. Inshallah today, uh, we go into uh, we expand to the section even further. Uh, he says, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim The Imam he says, "Wajibu alihi." He says it's also incumbent upon the mukallaf, the legally responsible person. So when he says "Wajibu alihi," meaning it is obligatory upon that person. Hifzul basrihi. He has to protect his eyesight, min al-nawri, from looking intentionally, looking ila al-haram towards that which is forbidden. So he says once again, وَيَجِبُ عَلَيْهِ It is obligatory upon the legally responsible person حِفْظُ بَصَرِهِ مِنَ النَّظَرِ إِلَى الْحَرَامِ That he protects his eyesight مِنَ النَّظَرِ from intentionally gazing and looking at إِلَى الْحَرَامِ towards that which is forbidden. So for example, it is Forbidden for a man to look at a woman sensually. A woman that he is able to marry, it's forbidden for him to look at her sensually. Likewise, it's forbidden for a woman to look at a man sensually. Likewise, it's forbidden for a man or a woman to watch pornographic videos, things in which people are engaged in activities that are against the religion of Islam, so especially when it has to do with sexual activities. This is This is usually directed towards that which invites and invokes lusts in the heart. So the eye is where lust starts. So a person has to be careful in protecting his eyes from engaging in and looking at that which is haram. Because without that, what occurs is that the haram becomes desirable to his heart. And the next statement, the next step after that is to engage in that particular act. Now, he says, وَلَا يَحِلُّ لَهُ And it's also impermissible for So if he says, وَلَا يَحِلُّ لَهُ that also means that it's forbidden for that person. It's forbidden for the mukallaf. That he looks ila muslimin towards a Muslim. With a gaze 
تُعْذِيهِ that will harm the Muslim. He says, وَلَا يَحِلُّ لَهُ It's not permissible for the Muslim. أَنْ يَنْدُرَ That he looks إِلَى مُسْلِمٍ towards another Muslim بِنَظْرَةٍ with a gaze or a stare تُعْذِيهِ that is harming the other person that he's looking at. So it's to look at a person in a way that is intended to demean him. For example, you show on your face that I'm disgusted by you. Or it's to look at a person in a way that I'm trying to show you that I'm scared, that I'm trying to scare you. You understand? That I'm trying to show you that, you know, I want to intimidate you. Any type of look that you can give to another towards another person by which they're harmed by that, either their their physical body is harmed by that, in the sense that they feel fear from you, or their feelings are harmed by that by virtue of they feel humiliated or they feel put down, then that type of gaze is haram. That type of gaze is forbidden for a person to direct towards another human being. You understand? He says, Illa an yakuna fasiqan. He says the only exception to that is when you're dealing with a fasiq. A fasiq is a person who openly sins and has no type of you know, has no type of regrets or shame or uh, discreetness about their sinning. They engage in their sinning outwardly and openly. So a person that drinks alcohol openly, a person that talks about fornicating openly, a person that kills people openly, a person that steals openly, all of these things are known as fisk. They're known as transgressions and great sins. And the fasiq is the person that not only commits those sins, but he is also uh, undeterred. He's not prevented by any type of shame from making, letting it known that you know that he commits, the, letting it known to people that he commits these actions. So in that case, if you come across that person and a look of disgust comes across your face, then that's not haram. You understand? Or you 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 direct a look towards that person to deter that person from harming you, then that's not haram. You understand? But even then, he says. فَيَجِبُ هِجْرَانُهُ He says, فَيَجِبُ هِجْرَانُهُ That even then in that case, it's wajib for you to leave the company of a fasiq. If a person is an open sinner, a person that goes against the rules and the transgressions and the limits that have been set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is incumbent for you to leave the company of that person. You should not engage in or befriend or sit with that person beyond what is immediately and unavoidably necessary. The only thing that's permissible is for someone that has knowledge and someone that has a capacity to not be inflicted by that person and for someone who is not assisting him in his sin, he has those qualities together and he is trying to bring this person back to Islam and back to obedience and back to righteous behavior. In that case, this person can sit with a fasil in order to Make sure that, that person's behavior becomes rectified. But outside of that, if you know a person is a killer, then run away from him. If you know a person drinks alcohol or does drugs, then it's best for you to stay away from him. If you know that a person is a fornicator, then stay away from that person. If you know that a person is a theft, a thief, I should say, then stay away from that person. The basis for this is first and foremost, the Messenger وسلم, he said that a man is upon the religion of his friend. Meaning that if a person befriends another person, before long he's going to take the characteristics and the ways and the habits of the person he's befriended. And it's far easier for a person that's on evil to influence a person that's good than for a person that's good but doesn't have certain capacities to influence a person that's evil. So therefore the person that's good, he should flee with his religion, he should flee with his morals from a person that's evil. You understand? Now, so inshallah we'll review once again. He says, وَيَجِبُ عَلَيْهِ He says it's, it's incumbent upon the mukallaf حِفْظُ بَصَرِهِ That he protects his eyesight مِنَ النَّظْرِ إِلَى الْحَرَامِ From looking towards the haram وَلَا يَحِلُّ لَهُ And it's not permissible for the mukallaf أَنْ يَنْظُرَ إِلَى مُسْلِمٍ That he looks towards another Muslim بِنَظْرَةٍ With a gaze to عُذِيهِ That is going to harm his fellow Muslim إِلَّا أَنْ يَكُونَ فَاسِقًا Except if it happens that the person he's looking at is an open, rebellious, transgressing sinner. فَيَجِبُ هِجْرَانَهُ And in that case, it's wajib, it's incumbent, it's necessary that he flees from that person. So inshallah, we will end the lesson here. Jazakumullah khayri ya ikhwan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. 
May Allah bless each and every single one of you and may Allah put barakah in this knowledge that we are trying to seek. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum.